if I'm not on top of my humidifier like I should be, I see the consequences as my leaves are unfurling. <music> another video. My name is Kenna and I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Today I'm going to be talking about some houseplant red flags. Uh, when your plants are letting you know something is wrong but you don't know quite what it is and what those red flags might mean. So if you like this kind of video leave me a thumbs up and let's get into it. So before we get into this I just want to preface uh, and say that these red flags I'm discussing today are relative to me in my collection not all people may find them to be true maybe you have other issues going on however for me these are the ones that i most commonly find in my collection and most commonly find the cause of in my collection so the first one that i want to address is yellowing leaves so for me yellowing leaves most frequently means that there is root rot uh, or just overwatering in general if you're looking at a plant and the leaves are yellowing at the bottom, and I'll try to insert photos of kind of what each of these look like, but the plants are yellowing at the bottom and they are dropping, to me that is a sign of root rot or something is really, really wrong with those roots. I typically, and I believe it was actually a really big plant here on YouTube that said this and it's really stuck in my head. If it's a uh, soft and squishy death, there's too much water. And if it's a hard and crunchy death, it's not enough water. So for me, yellow leaves are usually something that I associate with soft and squishy, too much water. Something is usually wrong with those roots. I have had a few plants in the past several months where I've noticed those signs. And when I unpotted them, sure enough, there was root rot or just something going on with the roots in general. So if you see your plant start displaying those signs, dropping those yellow leaves as the oldest leaves, that is something you want to keep an eye on. All right, so the next red flag that I want to address is the opposite. It's brown and crunchy leaves. So if you have plants that have, like their old leaves are browning and you don't know why and you're not sure what's going on, I would say check your watering. Uh, if you're having brown, crunchy, dry leaves, a lot of the times that means your plant is underwatered. And you know, not all plants needs are gonna be the same. Some plants are gonna like more water than others. If you have it potted in a different substrate or a different pot, that's gonna impact, you know, how much water that plant needs. So before watering, I, and I know you guys have probably heard me say this, like to take my finger, stick it in the soil, see what's going on. If the soil is damp, if it's dry, how far down it's dry, if it's a larger pot, I'd try to do like to the second knuckle or so. But if your plant is dropping those leaves and they're just getting brown and crispy, to me, that usually is an indicator of underwatering. And I can be an underwaterer, I know this about myself, and I also want to say some leaf drop is normal. Typically at seasonal changes, plants may drop some leaves that they've been holding on to. And if it's just one, maybe two, that's pretty normal. But if you're seeing a lot of leaf browning or a lot of leaf droppage, something is going on and you're definitely going to want to take a look at that. So browning leaves to me means over, or sorry, browning leaves to me means underwatering. All right, so the next uh, red flag that I want to address is malformed leaves. Leaves that just aren't forming right, something is going on with them, uh, and you know either they're not coming out of the caterpillar correctly or they're like all scrunched up and crumpled. <laughs> That's my pot pie, I'll be right back. Okay, I got those out of the oven, we're good. So as I was saying, malformed leaves, so leaves that are kind of scrunched up or crumpled up or just are kind of ripping and tearing as they're emerging. And this one, I'm gonna kind of cite two different causes. The first one, I'm gonna actually address humidity. Humidity is something that for a lot of aeroids and kind of as you get more into like the fancier ones, it's gonna be really important. Humidity in their natural environment is partly what allows these plants to develop their leaves and then grow those leaves and have them emerge from the caterpill without damage. If you're finding that your leaves are not emerging from the caterpill or there's something going on and like they keep on getting ripped or torn or coming out like weirdly misshapen, I would say check in on your humidity, see what's going on. A lot of the times if those leaves are tearing as they come out, it might be a humidity issue. And I will say another cause could possibly be underwatering as well. 
but for me and my collection, a lot of the times it's humidity. They need a little bit more humidity in that area. And if I'm not on top of my humidifier, like I should be, I see the consequences as my leaves are unfurling. So that's number one. And number two of malformed leaves. These are the leaves that are scrunched up, crunched up. And again, I'll try to put a picture here for you guys and just are emerging looking really weird. Uh, to me, that is a nutrient issue. Some plants are heavier feeder than others. Um, sometimes you're gonna find in your collection that your normal fertilizing routine doesn't work for every plant. Um, I know Ethereum, if I remember correctly, tend to be kind of one of those plants that is guilty of this. If you have a plant that's a heavy feeder and they're not getting the nutrition they need, their leaves are gonna come out looking weird. <laughs> uh, it's pretty common, it happens a lot. Um, so I would say maybe check in, see if they need a CalMag boost. I uh, recently started adding CalMag to my fertilizing routine. I haven't seen much of a difference yet, but I know for, for my research that that's one that can definitely cause malformed leaves is a calcium magnesium deficiency. And just check in to see about your normal fertilizing. I personally fertilize with every watering and I do use, I diluted amount. I don't use the full amount that one would if they were fertilizing, um, you know, on a regular basis or like on a, you know, monthly basis or what have you. I dilute it every watering and I give a little bit of fertilizer every watering. And my plants really seem to enjoy that. I haven't had many troubles. I did have one and that's probably the one I'm gonna show you guys. And actually I can grab it. Give me one second. Okay, so this is a plant you guys should be familiar with. This is my philodendron fuzzy petiole. For those wondering, I couldn't resist giving an update. This plant is doing awesome. I am so happy. Uh, if you look in the substrates, let me see if I can get that for you. Focus, there we go. I don't know if you guys can see those fuzzy new roots. There's one right here in particular that is gorgeous and fuzzy and I'm so happy to see it. Um, but this one prior to me, you know, repotting and doing all of the pond transfer that I did, and I'll link the video for you guys, was having some weird issues. And yes, it did have some issues with root rot. For sure, it was in too large of a pot for its root system. However, I will also say prior to that, I know that this plant is a heavier feeder. And if you look, and I have a brown leaf here, ignore it, I, it, this plant is still undergoing a transition, but this leaf right here that I'm holding onto, and there we go. This leaf right here, if you see it, it's like weirdly misshapen, kind of crinkled, kind of scrunched. And that's, I'm going to attribute partially probably to a little bit of underwatering, but also to a nutrient deficiency. Uh, philodendron fuzzy petioles are pretty heavy feeders. And if they're not fertilized in the way that they need, they're not gonna be able to develop those plants uh, or Nope, they're not gonna be able to develop those leaves in the way that they need to. So their leaves are gonna come out looking misshapen. So this one in particular is probably my best example of it. I do try to keep on top of my fertilizing so I don't see a whole lot of it. But if you're seeing kind of like reduced size leaves or just really weird crunched up scrunchy leaves, check in on your fertilizing, see what's going on. So the next flag that we want to address is actually a leaves not unfurling. So to me, again, this is kind of two distinct causes. I did, uh, are you good? Oops. Oh, thank you. I did address one possible cause of this in an earlier section. So I would say if it's a regular occurrence and your plant seems otherwise healthy, I would probably attribute it to a humidity issue, maybe a bump in humidity, maybe putting the plant uh, in the, ba the bathroom with you when you shower. That's actually a really great tip. Uh, I find that if I'm having issues with plant unfurling leaves and I pop it, you know, in the bathroom when I'm showering, it gets that steamy humidity, really does well in getting that leaf to loosen up and to release from the caterpill. However, the other issue that I'm gonna address, and this one I've mainly noticed with philodendrons, so if applying this to other plants, maybe take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, but philodendrons, if your leaves are not unfurling, and like the plant just keeps growing, but the leaves aren't unfurling. And I've had this happen with multiple plants. It's root rot or roots that are not substantial enough to support the plant. I will kind of give that. So something's going on with the roots. Um, I've noticed this in several plants, including my philodendron fuzzy petiole, my philodendron red sun, uh, my philodendron, it wasn't a moonlight. 
it's another kind of like one of those red sun type spinoffs um but i had fully developed leaves that were not unfurling and i couldn't figure out why couldn't figure out why one of them they were in those death plugs that you might get from a nursery um, where they were in like net pots or those uh dissolvable pods and they just weren't dissolving the roots were confined and they weren't getting the nutrition that they needed to grow and they weren't getting the space they needed to grow so i had fully developed leaves that were just not unfurling uh philodendron fuzzy petiole similar kind of deal as you guys know when i impotted it there was a little bit of root rot however those leaves weren't unfurling and the plant was still growing it was otherwise healthy ish <laughs> but something was going on with those roots and i just knew from the signs that this plant was giving me something's going on with the roots and as you guys know i was correct unpotting it it's a root problem so i will always say check your roots if your plant is growing but the leaves are not unfurling or the leaves are just not unfurling properly there's probably going to be a root issue check it out don't be afraid to unpot your plants really get in that soil shake the soil off see what's going on um, if you get kind of that, like rotting smell, that's a sign of root rot. If the uh, roots are squishy or brown, that's a sign of root rot. Those can be trimmed away and your plant will be much better for it. So the next one that I want to address is kind of tied into a lot of this, your soil that never dries out. So there are some plants that I have done this to. I am guilty. I am a plant parent just like you guys. I am flawed. Um, but if your soil isn't drying out, and I'm, the circumstances that I personally have had this happen in, I water a plant and I know that plant is gonna be thirsty again in like a couple of weeks, right? So I water it again in a couple of weeks without checking the soil. That's mistake number one, I know better than that. I hope you guys do too. If you're watering a plant without checking to see if it actually needs water, you're just asking for trouble. So that is what I did. I watered, I didn't check to see if it actually needed the water and the soil just wasn't drying out. The next time I went to go check on it, the soil was still wet, still damp, just not drying out right. And that obviously could possibly be a little bit of an overwatering issue, but that's also an issue that's going to lead to root rot. So if the soil is not drying out and it's been a week or two, I would say pull that plant out, check those roots because it's been sitting in that moisture for too long and it can't absorb that moisture because those roots are dying. So check the roots. I think that's probably the biggest takeaway from this video. If something is going on with your plant, check the roots. Something's happening. Roots are often part of the cause. Are you good? <laughs> so the next one that I want to address is soil that dries out too fast. Uh, this is kind of the opposite side of the spectrum. You're watering a plant like every day, every two days, and it just keeps drying out. So this is, again, kind of a two-pronged issue. Number one, I would check to see what kind of pot you have that plant in. If you have it in a terracotta pot or if you have it in a pot that has a lot of uh, like holes or aeration holes in it, like an orchid pot, maybe like that, um, that might be contributing to your issue. Those are going to allow moisture to escape the soil at a faster rate, or the terracotta will absorb the moisture from the soil at a faster rate. So especially in smaller pots, that's gonna to contribute to a drying problem. The other thing that this could be, and this is a good one for all you plant parents out there, if you are doing a really good job with your plants, they might be outgrowing their pots. If it's drying out, you have it in a plastic pot, or you know that the pot's not the problem, and it's drying out, all the time you're watering it all the time and you don't know what's going on your plant probably needs to be repotted um if you pull it out you're probably going to see a whole mass of roots in there because those roots are continually taking nutrition from the soil continually taking moisture from the soil and eventually when you know it gets to the point where it's pretty root bound there's not a lot of soil left there's nothing really to hold on to that moisture those roots are just there taking it up immediately as fast as you can put it in so if you're noticing that your plants are drying out really really fast number one check to see what kind of pot it's in maybe you need to change over to a different pot number two check to see if it needs to be repotted see if maybe it is really really root bound and needs to upsize 
The next planty red flag that I want to address is a plant that is not growing. So I know we probably all have those plants. We get them, we're really, really excited to have them. We bring them home, we put them somewhere. We hope they're gonna be happy under a grow light in a window. We water it, we fertilize it. You know, we're trying to baby it, make sure that it's happy and it doesn't grow. I personally have one of these plants, my uh, Ficus triangularis variegata is one of these plants. It hasn't grown for me in months. And while yes, a plant can absolutely go dormant, it is more unusual for a plant to be dormant in warmer temperatures and in light. So what I would say, if you have a plant that is just not growing, no matter what you're doing, I would say it's a light problem. If you have a plant that hasn't put out any new growth, you're fertilizing it, you know, it's in a, the right pot and you know, you're checking to make sure you're watering it, light plays a really big part in plant growth. Plants get their energy partially from the light, from that uh, photosynthesis that they are undergoing when they're in light. So a lot of plants, if they're not getting those light needs met, aren't able to effectively get energy and aren't able to effectively grow. So if you have a plant that's not putting out any new growth and you're sure everything else on this list is checked off, you are watering it, fertilizing it all about appropriately, maybe move it to a brighter light location. Um, for me and my ficus triangularis, which I will grab, so I'm looking at her over here. Ooh, this is my ficus triangularis. Um, she's undergone a little bit of a struggle, but even though she has active growth points, she hasn't grown for me in a very long time. And I know that this plant does have a reputation for being slow growing. However, even though she's in the south facing window, she's a little bit below the windowsill. So I feel like she's not getting the light that she needs to grow. And I'm actually planning on popping her somewhere with brighter light soon to see if that uh, kind of solves the problem. And I will definitely keep you guys updated and let you know what's going on. But that would be my first recourse is I'm watering her, I'm fertilizing her, let's check the light. And the last red flag that I want to address today is weird spots on your leaves. And I have a feeling if you guys have been plant parents for any length of time, you probably know where this is going. Uh, weird spots on your leaves, either browning or yellow or speckling, usually a sign of pests. And unfortunately, <laughs> if you have pests, that's a whole other kind of problem. And I will link a video here for you guys about how I treat pests um, if there's a pretty severe outbreak. And you know, that information is still pretty current. I am trying out a couple different methods, uh, including by the way, predator mites, which I'm very excited about. And I do plan to do a video on soon. However, if you're noticing speckling, weird spots in your leaves that you can't attribute to other signs of stress, I would say check for pests. And I actually have a wonderful example of this one and it's sitting right over there if I can get this girl to move. My best example currently of pest damage on a leaf is my Philodendron Majestic. If you guys look at this leaf here, that is some pretty severe spider mite damage. And I will say large part of the reason that was so severe is because this was an unfurling and brand new leaf when the spider mites attacked it, but it is just all kinds of speckled, all kinds of attacked. Uh, and you can clearly see that there is damage. There's something wrong with this leaf. So if you are seeing either brown spots or sometimes even black spots, like on the undersides of your leaves, those could be thrips. If you're seeing speckling like this, that's spider mites and mealybugs are pretty easy to spot usually sometimes they also can cause malformed leaves but if you see that white fluff you know something's going on though it's probably a mealybug problem but i did want to show you guys this because i think this is something that's really important as a new plant parent or maybe even a casual plant parent to note um, because it's something that can be overlooked especially if you don't see an outbreak or you don't see a problem it's really, really easy to miss kind of the initial signs of a pest infestation. So the speckling on the leaves is a really good marker that, hey, something's up, might want to check that plant a little bit further. All right, guys, and that is it for this video. I know it was a shorter one, but I just wanted to kind of share with you what my experience is with plants waving red flags in my collection. And if you are a newer plant parent, or if you're a plant parent who just needs to be reminded that sometimes your plants are telling you exactly what's wrong, and I'm one of the ones I can take that advice, sometimes I overlook these signs. 
it's a really good thing to refer back to and just kind of notes uh, what's going on with your leaves, what's going on with your growth and your plant and see maybe if there's something you can improve. So if you like this kind of video, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. There is a comment box down below. Let me know if there's any plants that you've noticed that are showing these signs or if there's any other signs that I missed. I know there's probably a ton of them out there and personally, I like to make lists of those. So leave them down below. And there also is a subscribe button. If you guys hit that, you will see my content pop up on your page more frequently and I would love to have you around. And I think that's pretty much it for today though, guys. So thanks so much and bye.